If I told you that at this stage of the pandemic or the COVID epidemic, you were told that healthcare workers were not really taking the COVID vaccine, would you be surprised? Would that make you think about whether or not it was the right thing for you? This is a real issue because this is exactly what is happening in the context of the CDC. They've got a problem here because as we look at it here, they have just recently published on the 31st of October, so this is recently news, influenza and COVID-19 vaccination coverage among healthcare personnel looking at the National Healthcare Safety Network. So this is the recent season, the respiratory season. And when they looked at the, um, the recommendations, because they currently recommend annual influenza vaccination for healthcare personnel, and they also recommend the receipt of the COVID-19 vaccines for all persons age greater than six months of age. So this is the US. And it's important to differentiate here because it's different in the UK. It's primarily focused on the older age groups and the high risk comorbidities. So somewhere along the line, somebody is not quite getting the science right. But let's not argue on minor points here. But getting back to the issue here, what we have seen as well is that during this respiratory virus season, 23 to 24, influenza vaccination coverage was 80.7% among the acute hospital care personnel and 45.4% among nursing home personnel. So that's the influenza vaccination coverage. And I think it's down a little bit, but overall it seems to be holding up. However, Coverage with the 2023-24 vaccination was 15.3% among acute care hospital personnel and 10.5% among nursing home personnel. This, in the context of messaging, is difficult because you are therefore recommending this to all age groups and the people who are at the front are not really taking it up. And it raises the question as to, well, were they only taking it in the first place because of mandates? I suspect not. I think that many people were very afraid, afraid of their own health, afraid of the risk to the families. And the perception was that anything that could impact or mitigate that risk was worth it. However, what they were not told was whether or not there were any specific risks. So if you if you think about it, if eating, uh, if taking a vitamin C, uh, I, I, probably not a good example, but if you can take something that has absolutely no risk and only benefit, it makes perfect sense. That's where I think they got the messaging wrong. Because the problem they had is that the healthcare personnel were at the front and so they are actually seeing firsthand if there are any issues. Now, they may not speak about it, but there's no doubt that they're seeing issues. One of the things that I have found interesting in this whole process is as you talk to people, and you, you, it only tends to come out one-on-one -on -one when you're speaking to people one-on-one, -on -one, and you're discussing sometimes the trajectory as to what is being seen. Most people, not everybody, some people think everything is fine. They're not noticing excess deaths. They're not noticing unusual cancers. They're not noticing a lot of people getting sick. Uh, for them, that's fine. But for me, I'm seeing lots of it. And the majority of people are also seeing this as well. And one of the things that is really touching home with regards to the healthcare workers group is the cancer issue. And the reason is because so many younger people are getting it. And every time you come across one of these people, it makes you reflect carefully on mortality, on your own risk, because you're seeing a 35-year-old come in with end-stage cancer, and this is no longer a one-off. We always had these cases, but suddenly it seems there is a whole host of them coming up. People are getting heart attacks all the time, and what I have been 
told in my journey of discussing, just generally trying to understand where people are, is that there is now a realization that there may be really a serious problem here. Now, it has taken some years, and I think that the what we're seeing with the drop-off in uptake for COVID vaccines versus the influenza vaccines. The influenza vaccines have been there for a long time. People generally tend to know what the issues are. Um, some people may feel a little bit sick. You could argue whether or not it has as much benefit as being said. You know, that kind of thing is going on. But with regards to the COVID vaccines, this is a new technology. And this is part of the reason why I said it is in no one's interest to not detail, do detailed research on it. And from my perspective, I think that the longer they take to do autopsy studies, the worse this is going to get. And it is going to continue to spill over to other vaccines because the assumption is going to be by the public that if you were willing to not investigate these ones properly, then what have you done in the past? It's going to damage the whole trust in the vaccine industry. And we all know that there are many vaccines out there, um, certainly many of the, uh, the whole vaccines that are tremendously beneficial for the immune system. And so we have a situation now where theoretically some of these individuals in positions of power are willing to sacrifice all vaccines just because they don't want to acknowledge that they need to do more research on the COVID vaccines. I'm not saying, and let me be clear, I'm not saying that there is absolutely a problem because the research has not been done. All we can see is that there is a clear correlation with issues. And as usual, we have to ask about the elephant in the room. There is an elephant there. It's sitting on the chair. It's pushing it down. Everybody is baffled. But nobody thinks that the elephant could be the cause of the problem because elephants don't do that. That's the kind of thinking that has put us in the problem that we are at the moment. And it really, really needs to be addressed very urgently. It's damaging trust in everything. So patients no longer trust their doctors because they're thinking, if you made such a mess up here in terms of your recommendations, what else are you messing up on? This was a very unique situation, but clinicians, healthcare staff, if they're not taking it, they need to explain why. What is their reason? What are they saying to family and friends? Is it just that they can't be bothered? Is it that they think that that should be the recommendation for everyone else? So this is 85% of healthcare personnel. This is what effectively they are saying without saying it. So they have to be clear as to what exactly they mean. So going back to the implications, this is what I'm talking about. Although the COVID-19 public health emergency has ended, first point here, it has not ended. It is still ongoing. It's just the presentation of disease has changed. It's no longer severe COVID, but people are still dying. Excess death is still up. We need to understand the mechanism. So they go on, thousands of COVID-19 related hospitalizations and hundreds of COVID-19 associated deaths still occur weekly. Exactly. So they noticed the influenza vaccination has not returned to 2019 levels. So it's impacting on influenza vaccination as well. And the number of COVID-19 vaccinations has continued to decline each season underscoring the ongoing challenge of promoting vaccination among healthcare personnel during the post-pandemic period. And so here is again part of the problem. COVID is actually not over. I keep on saying this. It, it, it sounds, uh, it, it, many people don't understand what I mean. They're saying, well, we don't have severe COVID in, in the hospital, so COVID is over. Well, if that was your marker, if that was all you were interested in and you had no interest in the impact that the virus has on the immune system, on gut inflammation, on brain inflammation, and this is even with mild COVID, we know 
this is a pretty serious infection. And so therefore, if we don't acknowledge the longer term risks to the population, that is not good practice of public health. The, the truth is, is that they, everything is being sold on the altar of protecting the COVID vaccine. Everything else they're willing to sacrifice because of this. It makes no sense to me. Just look at it, do the research, acknowledge that people have concerns. And so in terms of their ongoing suggestions, studies are needed, absolutely. And when you say studies, you mean um, not studies to identify effective strategies, but studies to prove that there is no correlation to the abnormal patterns that are being seen. So they are only interested in effective strategies to improve vaccination at a time when healthcare personnel are susceptible to low vaccine confidence. You need to ask why do they have low vaccine confidence? That really is the question. Is it because they are seeing people all the time being infected even though they're vaccinated? So they know it's not related to infection. Is it because they're seeing so many patients are getting sick and we don't fully understand what's going on and we don't have detailed research to explain the pathology? And they have in the back of their minds, this is the point, in the back of their minds, even though they may not say it publicly, they have this thought. This is the reality. You can't get away from it. There is an elephant there. And this is how the conversation goes normally. And, you know, I, I just ask, you know, we all seeing the hospitals are full. So many people are getting sick. There's cancer going on. What do you think is going on? And they, they'll say, well, it could be COVID. And I say, well, we saw COVID early on. I mean, did we see this then? And then it blurts out. Do you think it could be the... And then you go, well, we don't know because we haven't studied it. And then they start to talk. And that's what I think is driving that 85%. In the back of their minds, they are concerned about the implications. It is doing public health, the CDC, the FDA, the MHRA, no favors to continue to ignore what is blatantly obvious to anybody who is objectively looking at where we are today. There is a problem. It's just that we haven't investigated it. We haven't clarified it. And they keep saying the correlation doesn't mean causation. But everyone knows that if you see a lot of smoke, there is a fire somewhere. And we need to figure out what that fire is. It may not be what you think is burning, but you need to at least investigate it and not assume as most people are doing uh, who are following the narrative that this is COVID related. If you say it's COVID related, you need to tell me the mechanism. And if you don't know the mechanism, then you need to investigate it. And how do you need to investigate it? You need to do autopsies. If you haven't done autopsies at this point to identify and clarify the patterns, you don't know and you're pretending not to know and you are now bordering on negligence. That's where we are now. That's what needs to be done, autopsy, autopsy, autopsy. When you demonstrate safety by that, that's when you will have people trusting more in the technology and the benefits if it actually brings that kind of benefit with infection and otherwise. So there's a long road ahead of us, but at least the questions, even though they're not formally asked, are being asked by people who are in the front line. Have a great evening.